probably about eight years ago, something clicked in my brain where I was done just talking about stuff. I wanted to start doing things. I've always kind of been a free spirit. I'm a professional musician, so I love to tour and just do things on the road and just be out there living life. And you just get monotonous. It's like the same thing over and over again. And I crave different things, you know, new experiences, meeting new people, just being out there and doing it. I was tired of struggling so hard. You know, you work two jobs. I play music full time and I manage a ski shop, ski shop full time. And you know, after rent and bills, there's nothing left. So every month you're basically just paying for to have a place to lay your head. To me, this was like the, the easiest, smartest option. My family has been in RVing forever. I mean, my grandparents have been full-time RVers since I was a little kid. So it's kind of in my blood anyways. So when I had the, the thought like, well, maybe I should live in the van, it was, it was just an easy one, really. It wasn't a hard decision at all. Hi, I'm Josh and this is Rosie the Jambo and you're in beautiful Montana, welcome. When I found this ambulance, I really didn't know anything about the ambulance uh, movement that's kind of sweeping the country right now. I didn't uh, uh, have any kind of idea that it existed. I was just hiking on a trail. I came out of the trailhead and uh, the ambulance was parked there. So uh, what better rig I thought to start off with than an uh, ambulance. I mean, it's built to withstand a flip over, so it's a pretty solid uh, vehicle. So this is the inside of uh, the Jambo. Uh, over in the corner here is going to be the wood stove area. It's one of the things that I quite haven't finished just yet. Uh, I got the cubic mini that has to be plumbed out, obviously, and there's going to be like a wood box underneath. Uh, but for now, I'm just kind of storing all my extra stuff there, obviously. I read. I don't read a whole lot, but, you know, I'm building my book collection, and it's a good place to put other things like, you know, my Buddha. You got to have Buddha. Um, I have my dog's ashes. Actually, I actually have my father's ashes and things like that. So, you know, it's just a good place to put uh, stuff away from everything. And so, as you can see, uh, in the kitchen area and the other side, I went with a pretty unique kind of wall here. Uh, I actually reclaimed a bunch of pallets and stained them about five or six different stains. Uh, I actually have a real glass um, tile on the backsplash here. Uh, my best friend John did this for me. He's one of the best tile setters I know. So. You know, people are always leery about using uh, glass, obviously, because it can, can crack. But, you know, if it does, it does. Uh, it was reclaimed as well. Most of the stuff in here uh, I got from either uh, like reclaimed pallets or uh, leftover materials from his builds, you know, stuff like that. Or even this, the countertop here, which is a blue pine slab. I bought that for 20 bucks. I went with the stove for the same reason. I found that online uh, for like 20, 40 bucks. I think it was 40 bucks at the most. I, I basically bought things as I went that I thought I would need and then I built around that. Um, I basically just did the best I could with what I found and this is the end result. Well, my girlfriend, uh, soon to be fiance by the time this airs, will be my fiance. Uh, this was her idea. It's all, it's labeled for things that are in there since I can't see it, you know, beans, noodles, uh, uh, oatmeal, random stuff, you know, just whatever goes up there that I don't really have a spot for. And then I have my uh, knives here up on the uh, magnetic strip. I didn't, I'm not too worried about it coming off. It seems pretty solid. I don't think it's going anywhere. So silverware, you know, I just put up in a jar up on the shelf, little box that I built, you know. So uh, for the storage area for food and stuff like that, I kind of just uh, built a shelf and then I cut out a lip here so all the stuff doesn't slide out. And there's stuff in here like uh, sugar flour. Back behind there is a couple boxes with like uh, some uh, uh, dishes, stuff like that. Also, I have an actual stainless steel bar sink here that uh, works off the foot pump. I'm sure everybody's seen these on the internet. That's the... Uh, baby whale I think it's called foot pump on, on Amazon you just step on that and you get plenty of water it's enough to brush your teeth or fill up a pot or whatever you need to do it's super easy uh, the uh, plumbing was reclaimed as well as off a sink that somebody told me to throw away and instead I kept it of course um, above the sink area I have the the classic fruit basket you know to carry all my bananas and avocados and all that kind of good stuff uh, just a, stuff for the bathroom area over here uh, you know, deodorant, that kind of stuff. And then I just have some food stuff in here, you know, um, mouthwash. You don't want a huge mouthwash bottle, so reclaim some bottles for that. You know, just food, pantry stuff. Uh, I had to have some kind of closet and it holds pretty good amount of clothes as you can see. I have probably 20 shirts or so, you know, long sleeve, short sleeve. It all fits in there. I have the fold out uh, bed that I uh, made myself. 
Um, it's kind of like a futon, which is weird because I built a futon from scratch using a futon mattress. But once again, it was a cheap find. I got the mattress for 20 bucks and instead of spending a couple hundred on a foam one. I just uh, had a topper that I put on there as well underneath. Uh, that makes it super comfortable. Um, above the bed, there's uh, storage. I have little containers here that just carry, you know, like bathroom stuff, medicines. Bathing suits, that kind of stuff. Stuff I don't need to get to that often is on the back side there. And then I just put some shelves above the bed just to put random stuff, you know, anything that I just don't have a place for, I just kind of throw in there. I also have the pulley system on the bed. Uh, I pull that up and hold on to it to pull it out because it is so heavy. Uh, that helps with that because it's it would be a pain in the butt trying to reach over and grab it and pull it up and all that kind of stuff. Um, under the bed, I have a bunch of storage for stuff, uh, mostly clothes. Uh, my girlfriend, once again, helped me with this. She's uh, really good at organizing things and I'm horrible at, horrible at it. So uh, pants, you know, socks, underwear, that kind of stuff in this one. Uh, just a crate with shoes over here for this. Uh, I think in this one is just random like winter stuff that I'm not using right now. Covered in sawdust, of course, because when you do projects in your van uh, while you're living in it, there's sawdust everywhere. The thing about the ambulance is most of your storage is on the outside, which is good but bad too because like the stuff that you want in here to get to real quick, uh, you don't really have as much space for. So when you come in the door, uh, the first thing you notice is this whole area here. Um, I originally wanted to uh, use this above uh, for storage as well, but there is an AC unit in there that doesn't work and uh, electrical panel that was part of the ambulance. This is the whole like uh, fridge area underneath. It's got a pull up on the uh, built in slider here and then I have my oh, Dometic in there. And that's the Dometic 75 uh, CFW. So it's got the fridge freezer combo. Um, it's a great fridge. I don't regret that purchase one bit, honestly. It's it's amazing. This little area actually keeps it really cool because of uh, it's it's got the cover and everything. And also I'll put like my pillows and extra blankets and stuff in there as well. So it, it's like triple insulated basically. So the fridge is not working hard at all, really. So the power for the um, fridge comes from my battery system, which is over here here so under here I have uh, two six volt uh, Duracell batteries that I hooked together and those run to the fuse panel there and then up to all the stuff I have these Rinji panels here as well and these are the portable ones so uh, I can put those out in the Sun I have like a 25 extension on the cords so you can pretty much get it anywhere that the Sun is uh, which helps especially because you don't have to park in the Sun all the time so it stays way cooler in here and then I'm charging the batteries at the same time in the sun with the portable panels. So I built this cabinet here myself as well. Um, it's just held together with the string that comes with the uh, banana hammock, of course. It just, uh, you know, important paperwork, that kind of stuff. I've never built a cabinet before, so this was my first try. <laughs> it, I mean, it's not completely level, which nothing in here is, but it does the trick. The walkway, um, I don't use, which I thought I would, so I left it open, but I have noticed um, since the front of the cab isn't insulated, um, all the heat comes and the cold comes from up there straight back. Um, this entire back cab, I uh, redid all the insulation. So there's two inches of foam board and there's a layer of Reflectix. And then there's plywood and even pallet wood. So back here is super, super insulated, even the ceilings. Um, also, like I was saying, I didn't go with the max air fan. Um, so I utilized the vent system that's here in the ambulance already, actually. Um, I, had, I went with some marine grade fans that I uh, connected to the ducting that's already in the ambulance. And then I installed these uh, switches for uh, speed control so you can go up and down with the speed. And that's, that one's an in. There's one down by the door uh, that sucks air out. And then I have one here above the stove as well that sucks air um, out of the stove area as well. So all the steam and stuff usually goes out that way. So on the back here, I basically just have all my uh, cleaning supplies, stuff I don't want near the engine compartment area, you know, stuff that uh, might be flammable, obviously. <laughs> Stay back here away from everything. Around the other side here, uh, this is where the fridge is. So there's not much storage going on in there, but I have my battery box underneath there as well. Um, like I said, eventually if, if I had that on a pullout, I would have some kind of storage above there, but for now it's just the fridge area.
So on the other side, I have a big box on the back here, and this is mostly where I keep all my tools and all that kind of stuff, as well as my water system. So this is my gray water tank. That's a five gallon. And then I also have a six gallon fresh water tank that goes up that way. And um, it's pretty good in here. It, it might get hot and stuff, but I don't use it to drink anyways. It's mostly, mostly just for washing your hands or brushing your teeth or cleaning dishes. So these are the BF Goodrich KO2s. Um, they're a little bit much for what I have right now, just because I don't have four wheel drive, but Montana terrain is pretty rough. There's a lot of rocks, you know, so it's good to have a good ply tire with a good solid tread. In this container here, the Denon one is most of my fishing gear because I'm a huge fisherman. I kayak fish almost every day, uh, two or three times a day sometimes. And then this is my favorite cabinet because it's got all the good fun toys in there. Well, besides the broom, it's got uh, my fishing poles and also my snowboards. Uh, helmet, boots, all my stuff for the uh, winter seasons in there as well. And then as you can see the monstrosity of uh, electrical panels in there as well. Um, I was going to take all that out but after talking to my mechanic who actually is an ambulance mechanic, he informed me that uh, some of that's tied into the system. So instead of spending hours and hours and hours uh, figuring out what goes to what and ripping it out, I didn't have the time because I was trying to be in this thing as soon as possible. So. Uh, that's why I built the light box in the back to cover up all of this wiring running back there, basically. When you cut off all the fat, it's pretty easy to save money, really. You know, for the first time in my life, I can just go out and buy something I really want, like a new pair of shoes or something, and not have to worry about coming up with the money, because I have it now, you know? It's a good feeling. This has been something that's turned into a passion over the last six months, just researching, doing the YouTube thing, figuring everything out, you know? Um, it's pretty cool and I, li I love the problem solving of it because sometimes things don't always work, you know. And uh, above my sink actually I have a little thing and it says uh, no problems, just solutions. And I really feel that's true because there's always going to be something, you just have to figure it out basically. When you feel in your heart that something's right, go for it because that is the right thing. Yeah, that's your heart telling you to follow it. So basically I just follow my heart and it hasn't led me astray yet. So <laughs> just live life with your passions basically, follow your passions. That's how you'd be happy. You can check me out on YouTube under Josh and the Jambo, and I'm also on Instagram under Josh and the Jambo as well. I chronicle my snowboarding, uh, music, uh, drumming, and uh, the van life conversions and stuff like that as well. So uh, definitely check it out. We'll let this. Oh, I just so said I don't do that. Yeah, you're, <laughs> I did. You're, you're it. <laughs> Actually, could you be on 